We're this here. time tomorrow, I'll be on a plane. Ooh, buddy, Ooh. you excited? I am excited. Um, but, you know, it's a long flight. I'm not excited for a long flight. <laughs> yeah. Um, you excited very... to be cooped up in an airplane for hours? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. We were just talking about how I can't sleep on planes. Oh. Um, we have two shows tonight. I have to wake up early to go to the gym before work. So I'm hoping wow, maybe we really I can did not plan this out. Well, <laughs> tire myself out enough that I could maybe sleep on the flight, but we'll see. Should be good, though. Yeah. The forecast okay. doesn't call for a ton of rain. I'm hoping that it stays. I hope it holds for me. Yeah, me too. Um, but what have you guys been up to in the last week? Work. Yeah, work and uh, getting ready because uh, Emil and Tim are visiting here in a couple of weeks. So slowly okay. getting the office tidied up and slowly getting all the are gear. Are they crashing at your place or? Yeah, they're going to be here at the house for like a week and a half. And then we guest at Odafest. Oh, and right. then okay. they fly back. And then a day or two later, I fly over there because I'm guesting uh, with them at uh, Momocon. So we're doing two cons back to back. Nice. But cool. we all only have to travel for one of them, essentially, so it's not terrible. Yeah, that's cool. Still busy. Two cons back to back. I, I just did that like a month ago with GDC in Boston. It's a busy it's a busy week. It is. It is busy. It will tire you out. So I'm not super jazzed about that, but we'll make do. Cool. When is that again? In uh, is Odafest is uh, the 20th. Yeah, 19th, 20th, and 21st, and Momocon is 26th, 27th, 28th, and I think also the 25th. Cool. Mm. Right on. Yeah, so they arrive the 10th, and then, yeah. And nothing cool going on with you, Paul? Uh, No, not particularly, I guess. Okay. All right. I downloaded um, Michael Keaton's Batman for the flight tomorrow. <laughs> okay, yeah. Wow, okay. Well, I've Why never not? seen them, and oh. I was like, "Okay, I was like, I should probably see the Michael Keaton ones because, you know, he's in the Flash movie that's coming out, and apparently that Flash movie is like insanely good, which is shocking to hear." Okay, yeah, it is a little shocking, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm also shocked you've never seen those, but yeah, no, yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen them. I haven't seen like any of the old Batman's before Nolan's. I don't think I don't think I've seen any of them. Oh, you haven't seen like uh, the Adam West stuff, even. Oh, sorry. I uh, yes, I have seen yeah, the okay. Adam West yeah. stuff. Uh, yes, um, I'm not. A, I'm not insane. <laughs> right? Huh? No. <laughs> of um, course not. I love. I love that Adam West bo- uh, Batman movie. That one's great, and I own a copy of that. But uh, yeah. I haven't seen any of like the Tim Burton ones or any right. of the ones from like the '90s. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'd be interested but, but to I'll hear try what and get you the think. Mic. Okay, well, when I'm back, yep, do the whole rundown. He, he's this billionaire; he dresses like a bat. <laughs> yep, it's true. Yep. All right, top down perspective, April twenty seventh. I'm Sean Booker. Paul Fleck. Don Wheeler. Uh, right after this, we're going to be going live with our TDP Plus episode, all about Pizza Tower. Yeah. And next month. The poll winning game was The Wolf Among Us. Wow, so, okay. I was pretty shocked that that beat Final Fantasy X-2. Yeah. Oh, God, who put up X-2? I think, uh, I think I, they I, were all listener stuff that was in the running from what I saw. Like The win. only ones in the running was Wolf Among Us and Final Fantasy X-2. <laughs> <sighs> um, and Wolf Among Us won. Um, by like not not even just by like one by like two or three votes. Um, okay. Yeah. So I'm just kind of shocked that, that that happened, but that's fine. I'm stoked. Um, I, like I never saw game. the end oh. of that game. I've only seen the beginning two episodes, so I'm stoked to. And now you'll be it. ready for whenever that Actually, sequel never comes out. That I mean, it works great for me because <laughs> yeah. if it does, now I'll be ready. I don't think I've even played a Telltale game in full. So this will be a interesting time for me. Yeah, fair. Okay. Like, okay. Have you played any of the like kind of you know I say modern I, Telltale? I play games, a but... tiny bit of the first Back to the Future. That was it. 
And I guess strong bad. Okay, that one doesn't count. That's not that was like the one before they like switched over to what their like new style was. Yeah, so strong bad and uh and back to the future. Those are the only two I've played of theirs. What about that okay. Jurassic Park one? <laughs> that that nobody remembers. <laughs> I have it, but I never played it. Yeah. I I heard that was awful. I I don't hear good things about the uh Back to the Future one either. Uh that one was praised when it came out. I don't know what you're talking was about. Was it? Okay, yeah. maybe I misremember. Maybe I'm just thinking Jurassic Park. I need to go back and play the Rawls and Gromit games. Yes, those are good. Yeah. Um Cool. So we got a bunch of and then I've played like almost all of them, so we got a bunch of perspectives. I should just play like one of the Telltale games I haven't played, like Gardens of the Galaxy, and show up to the conversation with a bunch of with, the, with that perspective. Maybe yeah. I'll just do that. Yeah, it's like the fans idea. really want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. uh, all right, let's dive into some games we've been playing, and I'm excited to hear about Advance Wars. It is Advance Wars. Nice. <laughs> That's it. That's all I needed to say, really. Yeah. Are uh, you Are you playing? How are you going through them? Are you going through all of one? Are you going dipping your toes in both? Uh, I'm going through all of one currently because if you want to unlock all the COs so you can actually play them in the multiplayer, you still have to unlock them the same way you did in the original game, which is fight them in the story mode. I heard the multiplayer, you can only play with people on your friends list. That is correct. Same with, same with oh the maps. The maps are also can only be sent between friends. Hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, what? like Nintendo's still pulling this shit. <laughs> I kind of get it with the maps because you someone could just make something lewd. I kind of get it. That's like a loose, a loose <laughs> kind of get. But still, like, come on, man, this this should have been a slam dunk. The gameplay is yeah. great. If you like Advance Wars, you will love Reboot Camp because it is Advance Wars. Right. But yeah, it, you have to put up with that. There's a bunch of voice acting in it. All the COs are or half voice acted because that's how way forward does voice acting is they, they do certain full sentences and then sometimes just words and grunts. Yeah. Uh, Andy Parks. being the exact same voice as Ash from Pokemon has really thrown me off, but it is straight oh, up Veronica okay. Taylor, her, uh, his original VA. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Shantae's VA is of course, Nell, the first CO you meet in the game. And oh, okay. Eagle Raptor okay. is max so far. I think hmm. uh, that's, I've only, bumped into like five or six COs. Like I think I'm only like chapter nine. I don't think I knew it was voice acted. So that's cool. Yeah. But like I said, it's like half voices. So they, they'll say like certain lines and that's about it. Um, yeah, it's advanced force. It's got one and two in it. Uh, apparently there's a question when you're voting up the game where you say like, have you played this before? Or are you familiar with the series? If you say no, I think it forces you to do the first game. But if you say yeah. yes, it will let you pick between the two if you want. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I was trying to think if if I if I pick this up because I have played a good chunk of the first one. I've never played two. I've never played and, two as well. And what I keep hearing is, hey, this is a good remaster. Except Advance Wars One is still just kind of a bummer compared to how great two is. So maybe I should just play two if I jump into the remaster. Maybe. Hmm. Like, it's the same as uh, Advance Wars is where you get, like, the currency and spend it in Hachi's shop to, like, unlock COs and new maps and stuff like that. But the map creator's still there. Like, it's a good collection if you like playing locally or online only with friends. Or if you just want, you know, a good single-player experience because the Advance Wars single-player games are still fun. And you still have, like, the war room so you can just take on AIs and stuff like that. The multiplayer is, is it, like, versus or is there, like, a co-op? I don't know if there's team based. I didn't look into that, but it wouldn't surprise okay. me if that was in there because I, I thought the actual original game had that. I don't know. I definitely did not play any multiplayer on the Game Boy version. So, yeah. You think they do I, anything with the DS one? Is there, is there multiple DS I can't, ones? There's, there's two DS ones. There's a okay. Dual Strike, which is the same roster, the same cast, but they introduced more. And then there's. Uh, Ah, oh, shit, what's it called? Like, Days of Ruin, which is, like, super grim, dark, serious, and it's all, like, a whole new cast. Okay, mm. so they could do another two-piece collection. They could do another two-piece collection, yes. They should do that. Come on. 
<laughs> the only thing is I don't know how they're going to do like the above and below screens because like the top screen was basically like your flight map and the bottom was basically your ground map. I'm I'm sure there's there's must be a way. Nintendo's smart. They could do it. I mean, you say that, but it also took a year for the game to release while the war in Ukraine is still going on. So that excuse only went so far. Right. But I mean, like, I think that was justified. I was, that was a fine delay. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the delay makes sense, but I don't get why it went on as long as it did without a peep on it. Like they, I figured it was, we would have had it for like, you know, Christmas. It would have been like a nice pocket Christmas release or something like that. I, I don't know, man. I mean, you, it was with the same logic, it's like the war's still going on. So why did you release it? So it's like, who knows? I think that's what he's that, saying. That's is kind that of the my war's, point. The war's yeah, still going on. Point, so John. like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's not in the news. It's not in the zeitgeist. Because what's their other option? Just like just put this in the Disney vault. It's never coming out. <laughs> wouldn't yeah. surprise me right maybe they should have spent that year putting better multiplayer in it I actually am curious if they did anything during the year because like it was good to go from what people are saying yeah yeah that that is we'll never know that answer but I am curious if they touched anything like hey we we have time to fix that one bug that we weren't going to be able to get to they probably did mm -hmm. some bug twix fixes that they had planned to do after launch they probably just snuck those in there yeah yeah Man, that's uh, that's basically all I've been playing. Okay. How about you, Paul? Uh, I've been just playing a bunch of Demonologist with friends. Uh, that game is super fun. Demonologist is new phasmophobia for anybody who doesn't know or hasn't heard of it. Like, very much the new version of that. Like, it's pared down a lot of the... So, it is in early access. It's not fully released. There's not a whole lot in it currently because it just came out on the 27th of last month. So, it's been out for a month now. But it's the same idea. You go into a haunt, a place that's being haunted by something and you have to do a bunch of various things with tools to see what type of ghost it is by process of elimination. And uh, this one adds in some optional steps that you can do after you know what type of ghost it is to exercise it from the house or the place that it's haunting as well, which usually involves just a bunch of like weird little side things. Like one of them's collecting a bunch of rats and throwing them in a cauldron to like for some reason or whatever. And another is finding the note from the ghost or a person that's super depressing and all that sort of thing and then doing a final step to like rid the place of it it's yeah it's just another phasmophobia it's super fun though and uh, i've been having a good time with it so, is it as goofy it's scarier they're like phasmophobia is kind of they built all the mechanics for the ghosts and the tools and stuff and then they just kind of put them it randomly into different locations and maps, which is why that game has a bunch of maps. And also that game's been out for like two years now, maybe three even. I can't remember when it came out. Um, and this is every map actually has jump scares built in with RNG stuff as well. So like you'll be walking around and then like something will just appear out of nowhere and like come scream at you or jump at you nope. and stuff. So nope. it's very much like Thanks. this is like walking through a haunted house where phasmophobia is literally just finding the ghost and then things start going like creepy once you start finding it it's cool it's a good time uh i'm never gonna play this game yeah fair <laughs> enough <laughs> there make that promise to you it's a different vibe when you're with people it's because it's funny right sure. like you something jumps out at you and like you and your buddy beside you just like scream and laugh at it because like it's whatever it's not scary it's more enjoying like just the stupid thing that's jumping out and screaming at you or doing some weird shit at you right uh, i mean i do fun. think of like going to a haunted house by yourself versus yeah. going with a group of friends and those are two very different experiences to the <laughs> point is yeah. does anyone go to a haunted house by themselves or like, like oh, I'm just going to like the abandoned house on the outskirts by yourself with a flashlight and just like walking around versus going to an actual like amusement park haunted house with friends like there's a clear difference in the type of scares that you're gonna get yeah i took myself to 
the theme park. It's my day off. And I went to the haunted house by myself because I love haunted houses. I mean, there's something cute about that, but I also just yeah. don't know that that person Someone's is. definitely done this. A bunch For of sure. people have definitely done this. For sure. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, so demonologist is that with buddies and it's a good time. I recommend picking it up if you want another one of those games. I think it's 15 bucks or something. There is only three maps in currently. The thing that this game does poorly compared to Phasmophobia is uh, it locks out the maps based on your level. So you have to grind out the same map until you get to level three. And then you can have two maps to grind out till you get to level 10. And like Ew. that kind of sucks. Phasmophobia yeah. at least gave you like five options when you were like that, level one. And that sounds like locked. something they should do when they have like 20 maps in there. Or totally. Like that. Yeah, I think it's a big mistake, but I understand why it's that way. Because they're not just building the maps. The maps also have, like, the scares built into them. Like, it's not just putting down a map for you to be in. They have to build the map with, like, mechanics associated with it. So I get it, but also... May I guess the thing is, is that maybe wait until this is fully out, and then you won't have the same problem I'm having, because it's early access right now. Or if you can overlook okay. it, then... Yeah, there you go. Uh... And it made me jump back into Phasmophobia. That I don't know how to play that game anymore. There's so much shit added to it since the last time I played it. It's huge in a way that I can't understand or grasp. But uh, that's kind of cool, too. <laughs> I well, guess. So which one's better? They are de ve very much different feels. I think Phasmophobia is probably honestly better just because there's more stuff in it right now. But Demonologist okay. is definitely more quality over quantity. Like the stuff that's okay. in there is very good, but it gets repetitive. That's all. Yeah. That's really all I've been playing. Unless you want to talk about Incredible Crisis, in which case I just want to say fuck some of those mini games. There's nothing. I mean, I've played through Incredible Crisis, so we can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> just fuck some of those mini games, specifically all of the wife's mini games. All of hers are fucking terrible. Every other one is fine. Also, fuck the Have guy you... in the boat. Oh, the guy in the boat. Right. I was gonna say, did you do the Ferris wheel one yet? I mean, that's my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking knew it. Mainly because, oh my god, I guess like spoilers for this game nobody talks about ever, but when you beat that, you're just like, oh man, he's cheating on his wife. Nope, he just got blown up by a bomb. <laughs> it's so stupid. That game is so dumb. Uh, fuck the guy in the that's boat. That's the best part about it, that and the soundtrack. Oh my god, the soundtrack is so good. Yo, you like ska? Because there is shitloads of ska in this thing. <laughs> Tokyo Scott Paradise, great group. So good, yeah. That this is, a, this is a PS1 game, Sean, for reference. This is a PS1 game. Um, yep. People should just check that out. That thing needs like a re-release on something, but that is never going to happen. So just like find an emulator and pick, play that thing for a bit if, if you want. And if you don't want to play anymore, just quit because some of those mini games are garbage. <laughs> Honestly, some of them are terrible. Yeah, that game though. Oof. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, I played a very little bit of uh, The Last Case of Benedict Fox because that released today. It's on Game Pass. Right. How is it? I don't think it's very good. Yeah. Uh, oh. it, doesn't, it doesn't run very good. And yeah. It just kind of feels bad. I've, um, so I played this when they released the demo on Steam Days like two months ago or something, and I didn't really want to talk about it because I was like, I don't have very many good things to say about this, so I hope they fix some of these things. And it sounds like they didn't. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't get to play. Or sorry, I played this last year at PAX West, and right. uh, you know, I didn't get a great t feel with it because Reggie Fizeme was watching me play. Um, yeah. Uh, so that demo just didn't count. Um, yeah. But playing a bit today, it's like. I, and I guess it's maybe because like I've played a bunch of it, it's it's a Metroidvania or at least the levels are are laid out like that, um, right? And it just feels like the character is kind of slow. Yep. Like it almost seems like you need to be like more deliberate with your moves because you just kind of suck. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't tell if it's just like it if it feels bad or if it's just like no they just it just sucks. <laughs> I played I've been playing a bunch of dead cells, right? And it's like, oh, I should be able to like dodge and like get some invisibility frames. And it's like, no, you need to parry everything. You need to be looking at what you're parrying. People are going to attack you from behind. 
I guess you, at that scenario, you need to like hope you can turn around fast enough and parry, but the character's not fast enough. I guess you could right. maybe jump. It. I, I just don't think it feels very good. And then on top of that, it doesn't run very well. So not only does the character feel slow, but the game is like having a hard time catching up to like the movement I'm doing. Or like it gets real framey, which is not helpful. Um, so it just kind of left me with like, I should just go play Dead Cells. Yeah. Uh, did you get to, I don't know if it's like a first boss. I played a boss in the demo. Did you get to that boss ever? I did not get to the first boss. It sucks. I think I did. <laughs> I think I got to the first boss when I played it back at PAX. Um, and I, I think I just remember getting beaten pretty quick. Yeah, I guess for clarification for anybody who's not going to play this or whatever, the boss is kind of like this big screen boss where there's tentacles on either on the left and right side and it can attack you in the middle. And uh, it'll do like a tell that it's going to attack on the left or right side. And it's usually whatever side you're on at the moment. You don't move fast enough to really dodge out of its way very easily. And I'm assuming you have to probably parry it. This some game seems some like of it, yeah. The- like, this game seems like because your character doesn't move very well, they want you to parry everything. But the parry sucks is the problem also with this game. <laughs> What's annoying about the parry is because you can hold down the parry button and it it looks like it makes a shield, but it doesn't. It's not a shield. Right. It doesn't block attacks. <laughs> like So it's like, what is the point of this like visual? What am I looking at? Like, I'm clearly surrounded by some kind of bubble like tentacle bubble thing. Like there is something between me and the guy hitting me, but he can just hit me. Yeah. So that, that, that took a little bit for me to realize like, Oh, I can't just like play defensively. You have to be parrying and then attacking. So yeah. I don't know how I'm, I'm not a huge fan of when it comes to parries in games. That's not, I don't, I don't really, I usually try to avoid that mechanic. Okay. It doesn't seem like something I'll be able to avoid in this one. So we'll have to see how much I'm going to, continue playing a bit i'm also about to have two weeks of not playing this game so that's probably not going to do very well with it sure yeah which is a bummer because i was looking forward to this quite a bit yeah I, I same really here cool so that's a bummer to hear it's not that good the art style is super cool and honestly it puts his yeah. best foot forward with you like walking into a house and it's like oh something creepy's happening here then you go into like the gameplay world and you're like oh this is kind of like a half-baked indie metroidvania okay yeah, it definitely it definitely has a feeling of like this needs to be polished. Polished, yes, for sure. Yeah, the movement that, feels kind of what it bad. Feels like. Yeah, I'm glad you no, agree. Um, <laughs> Actually. No reviews on Metacritic viewer or critic. So I mean, it came out today. Yeah. So. Well, sometimes they they hit it in time. You never know. I will say like, it nothing. did feel like the type of game that if you play it for a few hours, you could probably get used to its jank. And, like, if you like the world and art style enough, you probably could be fine with it. Uh, it just didn't grasp me the way I think it should have within an hour of, like, me being actually excited for it. Uh, do you want to hear about some other game I played? Yes, I do. I, I played Coffee Talk 2, a good chunk of it. I think I'm about halfway through the game. Uh, okay. And this game's great. I, it's awesome. It's exactly what I want. It's pretty much identical to Coffee Talk 1. There, there's almost nothing new. The one new mechanic is sometimes uh, characters will forget an item and then you put it in the drawer and then you can give that item to other characters and it'll like trigger. You know, you got the good ending because you made sure to return the guy's lighter to him or, you know, you get you, or you can give it to different characters and that'll trigger something else as well. Um. Other than that, though, if you played Coffee Talk, you know exactly what this is. If you played uh, Valhalla, you know exactly what this is. It is just more of that, which is exactly what I want. This is the best, uh, like, 30 minutes before bed. I'm playing this. I'm playing it. Um, it's on Game Pass, but I'm playing it with my Steam Deck through Cloud Gaming. And it okay. runs great for me. Um, so, yeah, just absolutely love that. Cool. It's a, it, I, I'm actually kind of surprised how much it picks up like right after the first one, even though it there, there is three years set between them. One of the characters was literally like, hey, can you make me the uh, coffee you made me the first time I ever came here? And it's like, oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm going to Google this because there is no way I'm making that for you. 
Uh, but yeah, so you probably already know if you want to play Coffee Talk or not. Uh, last thing I wanted to briefly mention, I brought a bit of show and tell. This okay. is um, this is something I'm planning to like use when I'm on my trip. Uh, this is a set of AR glasses from a company called Enreal. Okay. And the reason I bring it up is because from a video game perspective, they're basically an external monitor that you can plug into anything that's HDMI out and then have a big screen in front of your face. Hmm. Interesting. I'm planning on using this on the plane. Nice. Have you tried them out already? Oh, yeah. I've had these for uh, a couple weeks now. Cool. Can you tell us your verdict or is it too early because of the uh, review? No, I, I think they're very cool. The problem, the main problem is they're not as portable as, as you might think they're going to be. Um, so like from like a best case scenario to a worst case scenario, the Steam Deck is the best case scenario. Mm. You plug these USB-C into the Steam Deck's USB-C, it just ports there. You are now playing a big screen TV directly in front of your face. And that's awesome. You can do that. You can do it with phones as well. For like iPhone, you need like a, a, an adapter because the iPhone is not USB C. But if you have like an Android phone that's USB C, it connects into that. Cool. W- slightly worse scenario. Okay. Let's talk about the Switch for a second because I learned some <laughs> stuff about the Switch this last week. Oh no. <clears throat> All right. The Switch cannot do display out through its USB port. Right. Meaning you cannot plug these directly into that the USB C port on the bottom because it does it, it doesn't know how to do display out. It can right. only charge through that. That's why the dock exists. The yes. dock can do display out, which means if I want to use these glasses with the switch, it needs to be in the dock. No. So so it would be the same way as if I wanted to use it with an Xbox or a PlayStation. I need to use HDMI out and there's an adapter that Unreal sells. Uh so you can connect USB-C to the adapter, HDMI to whatever is you're doing that's HDMI out. Right. You can purchase, and I did, it's like 25 bucks, a mm-hmm. little tiny adapter. And I think I probably have it here. Just like on Amazon, there's a bunch of these. It's basically like a USB-C hub, but specifically... That's so much shit for that I'm pa- I'm already kind of packed so but anyway I'd hope so you're leaving tomorrow yeah yeah um so you can basically get like a USB C hub um but as long as it supports display out through that USB C port so you can't just use any USB C hub so anyways I bought one of these so you plug the switch into this hub then I can do the HDMI out to Enreal's adapter, the adapter to the glasses. So now I've got like two dongles. However, you cannot charge that. You cannot power that USB-C hub with any old USB-C cable. Because the ideal scenario at that point would be like, I need to I need to give power to this dock. You know, the switch dock needs power. Can I just plug that into like a a portable USB battery that I'm going to have in my backpack? Now I'm technically portable. You can't. The switch can only be powered dock wise with the the power cable that comes with the switch. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. so I I learned if you plug any other USB C cable because I was thinking like you know I'll, I'll just bring like like any USB U to you like maybe I was even plugging it into like my MacBooks USB like wall thing because I was like okay. clearly that would give me enough power. Yeah. There's a pop up that comes up on the Switch's screen that says this is unsupported. Please use the cable that came with the Switch because Nintendo mm. has hard coded into the Switch. You need to use our cable, even though it is just a like wall mount to the USB C. That's interesting because I've I my gut reaction was no way. I've definitely used another thing, but I don't know that I have actually now that I think harder about it. I think I've always just used the one for yep. the switch. So so which means if I want to use these glasses on the plane, I need to have a wall outlet. Weird. Okay. Which kind of sucks. I did actually look up the plane I'm taking, and I think I do have a wall outlet. What type of <laughs> so plane I'm is it? I'm going to take. I don't know, man. It's like a 300. It's one that flies. 
Yeah, like what do you? I, 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 I don't know. I don't have it memorized. I'm not a plane guy. Do I look like a plane guy? Yeah, you travel oh. enough. I would have assumed just by osmosis you would have oh, learned yeah, that's the, the that's types the of planes. Seven seven seven. I can tell you everything about it. It's probably it's like, not you know, a seven seven seven. Don't be it's not. Ridiculous. It's something with three hundred in it, or like three thirty or something like that. That's okay. all I can tell you. Airbus. Oh, it's an Airbus. Yeah, it's an A three thirty. Okay, A three thirty three hundred probably. Yeah, you probably do have an outlet on it, honestly. <laughs> okay, the fact that you know this is insane. You said it's probably a, that's like a super common plane. <laughs> I, sta- this is only because you've worked with planes. No, the John knew too. Knows, John was the first knew. one that said it. I also knew. It. <laughs> Why do you know about planes? Are you guys, he plane travels. Guys, are you a secret plane guy? You have to tell me if you're a secret plane guy. <laughs> but you didn't do the handshake, so what am I supposed to do? That's true. <laughs> Um, okay. Anyways, I'm bring the cable in, in the in the hopes that it will work. Man, uh, if I can play like <laughs> Zelda on the way home with a fake big screen TV, I'd be pretty cool, right? Please that tell me if you have this like weird, just MacGyvered situation to play this that's, game. Yeah, you take a picture. Exactly what's gonna happen. I want to see a picture I, of you I, with yeah. like three dongles hanging yeah. off your glasses. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> well, so no. The, It'll all be on my lap because the glasses will have one cable down. The cable goes into a dongle. That dongle goes into another dongle, which connects to the switch. This already and sounds I, so excessive. And then I have this to take so the Joy Cons off the. the how? How? What thing. is this battery powered? How much power does this thing have? The glasses have no batteries in them, so that it will okay. drain the switch's battery quick. But again, I'm going to be plugged into the seat, so it should be it should be okay <laughs> as long as it's giving enough power. <laughs> then, you know, another good scenario, and this one's another easy one, into my phone so I can watch like a like Batman starring yeah. Michael Keaton. I can watch that with this fake big screen. So I'm going to try that out as well. So. I just love this, like what gaming is actually like with the Switch after. Remember all the trailers and all the like PR marketing stuff for the Switch showed like a dude on a plane just like popping it down and then playing with the Joy-Con or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And now there's yeah. like you with all this shit and wires <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I mean, I can still do that. I can still just set it up, but then I'm with this tiny little screen. Yeah. Like a peasant. Right, exactly. Like that Table dude in the thing. Mode? Yeah. <laughs> what is this shit? It's 2023. Yeah, give me a wall outlet, idiot. <laughs> yeah, so. I don't know. I'm going to try it out. I think it'll be cool. I'm hoping it'll be cool because I'm bringing these all these extra cables to, to do I, this. I'm more curious if this is going to hurt your eyes and stuff like that. Because, like, how yeah. far away does it feel visually? It, it feels, I don't know, maybe half a meter away from you. I've been using it. Like I said, the, the for example, coffee talk, laying in bed, like, mm-hmm. flat. I'm I'm laying on my pillow. The, the Steam Deck is on my lap. I'm not looking at the Steam Deck. I'm playing Coffee Top on the ceiling, basically, from my view. Okay. That's, that's awesome. That is kind of neat. It's, that's yeah. pretty These have speakers. These have speakers have speaker? in them. Yeah. So it literally is just a full-blown TV. But it's nice and portable. So, like, these are cool. As much as it is, as I've made it sound, like, <laughs> you need to do all these, like, dumbass workarounds. <laughs> Again, like I said, this, with the Steam Deck, it's great. Like, it's right. just you plug it in the Steam Deck, you're done. If you want to do the Switch handheld, it, it turns into this whole other thing. But I mean, again, you could also like, let's say you're taking like an Xbox on the go. You could you could just plug this into the Xboxes. You it, it's like a it's like a monitor. Yeah. But you don't have to bring a monitor with you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the and it's there the, each each lens and for each of your eyes is a 1080p OLED lens. It's sharp. You can read text totally fine. You could use this as a monitor for your laptop. I have plugged it in my laptop and I, I wouldn't want to edit video with that, but I absolutely could. Right. I didn't have a monitor. That's cool. I mean, it's very cool. Yeah. It it is super neat sounding. It's just really funny with the description of just how nonsensical the switch is. How much do they sell? The switch is handheld. These are like just under $400. Yeah. Okay. Which is a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot. I don't know if I would say go out and get one of these, but especially because the, with all these cable things, they kind of seem like kind of maybe not first gen tech, but like second gen tech, but they're not quite usable enough. Um, 
in every every scenario if these were wireless that would be pretty incredible but then you know there'd be probably be a bit of latency yeah. yeah to be fair it it was it's nintendo's fault that you need such bullshit to connect totally. these to that no you're totally right it, this it is, is a not, nintendo thing yeah. yeah this is absolutely a nintendo thing so yeah yeah uh, anyway these again these are the nreal air glasses if people want to like look them up for themselves um so yeah I'll, I'll be I'll be testing those out at while I'm while I'm on my trip. Cool. Let's do some news. Uh, there wasn't a ton of news this week, but the big thing is that the UK has blocked Microsoft's sixty nine billion dollar purchase of Activision. I had heard about uh, this, but I didn't hear what the actual reason. Was. Yeah, I didn't look into it myself either. So oh. the reason is the weird thing. So, you know, we, we we kept seeing Sony trying to stop it because of Call of Duty, right? That was like the big narrative over the last. Yeah. The UK stopped it because of cloud gaming. What? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the CMA, <laughs> which let's see if I can figure out. That's the Com- Competition and Markets Authority. Okay says the gaming deal would harm competition when it comes to cloud gaming. So the I guess the idea is it would make Microsoft's cloud gaming, you know, Game Pass that has X Cloud, that stuff, <clears throat> such a juggernaut that it would just kind of it would be unfair and uncompetitive. And they even called out because Stadia is also gone and Stadia is no longer a competitor. So one way you could read this is that Stadia going under kind of fucked this up for Microsoft because they were no longer a threat. Interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't think anyone kind of saw the cloud gaming thing coming. Um, but it's not even like a mention of Call of Duty. It is literally just there's not enough competitors when it comes to. It's weird because it's like. The, the argument is kind of saying it, it wouldn't allow other cloud gaming competitors to even like form because it, w- it would be such an uphill battle. So they're almost getting penalized for something that doesn't exist. Which I'm okay. sure Microsoft is kind of arguing. This is a um, uh, so it's uh, Stephen Totillo here apparently is uh, paraphrasing some stuff from uh, Michael Pactor, uh, who I'm not currently reading his tweets or stuff about this, but I really like this line right. here of uh the uk is protecting services that don't exist it's assuming unborn services are more likely to succeed than cod is to fail which is a flawed assumption cod might not be good in 10 years so the reason i bring up michael pactor's quotes is just i was kind of seeing a lot of outlets uh pointing out this specific thing uh yeah one of the ide- for those who don't know michael pactor is a is an analyst a consultant in the games industry so he kind of makes a lot of guesses for like ever <laughs> i guess but he's been very yeah. good uh, like he's not just a weirdo he has had, says he's shit. had hits he has had misses but he's had he's had some good hits yeah one of his one of the kind of the lane forwards that he was seeing that he was not not that he was proposing but he was kind of assuming might be an avenue that microsoft could take is basically making a game pass uk that would not have activision content in it right so it would be the less competitive in the uk yeah Uh, this is completely fucking asinine. This is ridiculous, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This I uh, was not expecting that, was, that reason from. Yeah, that was that, that was the thing. Another thing that was kind of pointed out. This again, Stephen Tatil is writing over at Axios, is that according to the CMA, Microsoft's cloud streaming agreement meant it would get to keep all in-game purchases so for example if you play call of duty on playstation plus uh, the mm-hmm. battle pass payments go to microsoft hmm. uh, which they were saying again is too much of a, a monopoly so uh and that you know this this is this was microsoft saying hey how about what if we do this and them saying no that's insane you're still getting a monopoly here um with with this revenue so we're blocking it that was another you know thing that was called out and whatnot right at this point it's it's very unclear if it keeps continuing how it goes it's i don't believe it's done dead i haven't heard, seen any reporting that the deal is finished i'm no. assuming microsoft would continue to go on that so yeah but i don't know how you fight back against this again we do have that example from michael from pactor about you know carving out a uk specific 
more competitive option. I just, I don't know if I see Microsoft doing that. Yeah. Like, I don't I'm, know. You, you, you know, see them also forward. just giving up on it, though? Like, I doubt they're going to go down without a fight. Yeah, I don't see them giving up on it. But I just the idea of, like, you know, it's fake E3, it's whatever, <laughs> they're doing a live stream, and they're like, and here's what's coming to Game Pass next month, and then asterisks beside every second title not available in UK. Like, yeah. that's not a great look. Like, that just seems odd, but who knows if that's, like, the easiest way for them to do it. It seems like weirdly desperate to like for the UK to just be like, well, we can't find any other reason. So cloud gaming, maybe like maybe that we could block it on that ground. <laughs> yeah, Weird. I don't know. To be fair, like the UK is a lot more stringent uh, than on a lot of the stuff. other territories for sure. Like they're also the the region that is forcing Apple to have to make USB-C on the iPhones. Yeah. And stuff like that. Um so, you know, it's probably good so that they, they stop these monopolies and these mega corps from happening. Totally. But yeah. It's just odd is what I guess my thing. It's just it, a the funny reason, reason was reason odd. For it it yeah. was no one saw this coming. Yeah. <laughs> Since every all the spotlights was Sony being like, but Call of Duty, man, I want Call of Duty. And then they're like, yeah, cloud gaming. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean... If you even look in, in any every region, any region, it's like there's I, I Nvidia has their cloud gaming, right? Like what what are the Here, other competitors really? Yeah. Here's here's a flip side coin then. Do you think Microsoft gives up on cloud gaming so they can make the deal go through? No, I don't think Absolutely so. Absolutely not. Absolutely yeah. not. There's in a world where Microsoft does not have a portable console to like combat the switch their answer is the is the cloud gaming on phones arguably the cloud gaming is the thing they have over every other company currently really it's just it's very good i mean google couldn't compete yeah i mean google also has notoriety in like abandoning products pretty fast yeah they didn't want to throw money at it like they could have forever if they wanted to but yeah they didn't see yeah, I think this is Microsoft's battle to win with cloud gaming. So I don't think they give up on it. Yeah, so I guess that's just, you know, high in the sky prediction. Do you still think the, the deal happens? Uh, yeah, I mean, this seems pretty stat like everybody is going to have to scrutinize this for like anti-compete clauses and stuff like like, yeah, this is just another bump. Um. I don't know how they're going to get through it, but I'm sure there's going to be a deal somewhere. Real quick question in the chat. I'm guessing cloud gaming is different from just game saves being stored in another place. Yes, yes. this is like game streaming. This is playing games over an internet connection, not having to install them. Yeah, the idea is, is you're playing on basically someone else's hardware and it's just being like stream to whatever to you're your, on your yeah. phone yeah exactly yeah because cloud storage everyone has that like even nintendo has that <laughs> so like yeah if nintendo has it everyone else has had it first and for probably five years i mean nintendo, nintendo even nintendo. has cloud gaming stuff that like for some titles so they're oh, not they, fully they do gone. you're right yeah yeah but that's like per dev though and they're usually not popular and they're usually j very focused in japan <laughs> Also that. Well, and control? Usually... Yeah, Control Control was well. a streaming one. The Resident Evils are as well. Yeah, the Kingdom Hearts games were. I've just heard they're bad ports. Like, the, it doesn't yeah. do cloud gaming very well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then to this quick last little news story, uh, they've confirmed there's a Horizon sequel, which, of course, there absolutely is. That second one ended on a cliffhanger. Ooh, yeah, I so wonder the, what game's going to take its lunch the third time. I was <laughs> like, about to say, and the oh obvious joke is which large open world game is also going to release oh, around this time. Grand Theft Auto 6! Grand Theft Auto 6, I've heard. Are we taking a bet now? Is that is this our guess? How long do we have until we think it's coming out? Because well, I would have said, like, how long Core, between like Elden Ring 2. Yeah. So, okay, when did Horizon Zero Dawn come out? That was February 2017. And then uh, Forbidden West was 
last year? Yeah, last year. Yep. So that would have been five years. Okay, so we're looking at 2027. It could be Grand Theft Auto 6. <laughs> it could be Grand Theft Auto 6. It could be Elden Ring 2. Yeah. Yeah. What's uh, Skyrim 6? No, the next Skyrim? The next Elder Scrolls? Oh, yeah, Elder Scrolls, Scrolls 6. 6. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. The new Legend of Zelda on the Switch 2. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's gonna be so. all three simultaneously. Yeah. Gonna happen. <laughs> Part of me is wondering. I wonder if anyone there is like, we should just do that, just because it'll be so funny. Or do you someone's? Or do you think that someone are <laughs> being absolutely not? We did this twice and it ruined us. There is no way. Yeah, there's just a CEO just being like, hold my beer or whatever. <laughs> oh my god, I like I like Troy's recommendation. Half Life Three. Half Life Three finally announced <laughs> the release on that exact day. <laughs> or you know yeah exactly like horizon picks their date they're totally in the clear and then valve's like we've just been sitting on it we've just been waiting we're, yeah. we're dropping it the same day Boom. we want to fuck with someone and it's you today but they don't even yeah. announce it they just drop it on the same it's day. a shadow drop of <laughs> half-life three and oh my god <laughs> At that yeah, point, it, I'm like, yeah, the studio just has to shut down. Like, yeah. they're never gonna, they're never gonna catch a break. Totally. Yeah. Because I would assume that like Gorilla would just keep delaying it if they knew something was coming. Like, we're delaying it a week. I don't even care. Yeah. Just one more week. One more week. We're not doing this again. <clears throat> we're delaying it another week. It's like, uh, okay, okay, is it clear? So you have to All surprise right. them. <laughs> you sure they've? Is, you sure it's live? Okay. Half Life. Put it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it'd be so good oh man <sighs> poor guys <laughs> question time if you want to send a question in top down perspective at gmail.com at tdp podcast on twitter the discord channel or john's p.o box and you could sound just like kevin who asks what do you think of people putting their religious views in games or movies I love it. Uh, that'd be what is in most games. Yeah, no, I love I it. I also said yeah, I love it too. I don't want everything coming from the same perspective. Sure. Unless it's a top-down have perspective. You, oh, have you heard of whoa. Metal Gear Solid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I'm a big fan of that. I just want like yeah stories from different places, different perspectives. Like that's that's why I watch movies. That's why I play games. I don't want to experience the exact same viewpoint every single time. That would get that would get boring. For sure. Yep. Uh, Suku Suku writes: Has a character ever ruined a game for you? Oh God! Uh, I know it has. Yeah. I can't think of a specific example but i know i've completely complained complained about certain characters yep me too i'm trying to think right now of one <laughs> so the the discord channel was discussing my character of choice um oh okay and they brought up a good point so they brought up claptrap uh claptrap didn't ruin that game he just sucks <laughs> well that was kind of what they were thinking of is like it's hard to find a character that actually ruins a game because for the most part you can kind of ignore it. Yes. Um, so, like, I don't even know if I would put Claptrap as the answer. Claptrap does suck, and I hate every time he shows up. Um, but I can also just not listen to Claptrap, and I still get to, you know, do the shooty part and pick up the fun loot. Oh, P-33, the main character from Atomic Heart, sucks, and you can't not play as him. <laughs> That's okay. a pretty big one. <clears throat> okay like every time he talks it just the game is okay everything's going cool and then he'll just be like he'll say something and I'm just like ugh <laughs> just disgust yeah I'm trying to think back to like my brief time with it and it's like sh sure like uh, there's obviously dialogue with him but then there's also just like gameplay where he's not talking yeah and that part's fine so he ruins every part yeah. he talks. In. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Think I don't of think I have. I don't think I have like a one that has actually ruined a game for me. But definitely there's plenty that have made the game worse. <clears throat> yeah, fair. Someone says the quiet man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. <clears throat> 
I don't know. Cause that was pretty funny. And you kind of need him being him. And the quiet man. Okay. Dad writes in and says, how many 10 out of 10 games have you played in your life? And what is the best 9 out of 10 game which does not make the cut? Oh. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a person that's afraid to say something's 10 out of 10 because I know ratings are subjective for the person and not an actual objective. This is perfect, which okay. Some well, people let's start there. What's a 10 out of 10 game for you? Uh, Dark Souls. Still okay. What's a nine out of 10 game for you? See, this one is harder. a hard time. Like, figuring yeah, that that's out. harder. Exactly. This one's way harder. Uh, Resident John, Evil what's 7. a 10 out of 10 game. Chrono Trigger. Yep. Okay. Ten, what did you say, uh, Paul? Resident Evil 7 is a 9 out of 10 game. It just lacks a little bit more to be, like, outstanding. Okay. John, do you have a 9? I need to think. I don't know. That's that's a tough one. Okay, I guess the easy one would be, like, Burnout Paradise. For a 10 out of 10, right? Or 10 out of 10, and then maybe <clears throat> Burnout Paradise Remastered is a 9 out of 10. Okay, like it took something away that you love. Well, it's just because it's like <clears throat> you are now competing with modern racing games, which have evolved, I see. and you did not evolve. Yeah, <laughs> like, I see. I get you. I could really go for fast travel now and stuff like that. So that might be, that might be something like that. But that's also kind of... A weird answer. I think Control's a 9 out of 10 game because that story could have been better and it's carried by the other side stuff and it's uh, ambience the whole time. I, oh, that story's like goofy and fun and just weird and... No, it's boring. That story's boring. It's the side stuff oh, that's I good. It. I don't know if I would do 10 out of 10 for that game, though. I think that's a 9 out of 10 for me, personally. <clears throat> See, I keep thinking of like small little things like Bloodstained would be a good example of what I might count as a nine. But I'm sure. like, I could lower that number, too. I don't usually. <laughs> yeah, like, you, I can think of like I can think of eights. I can think of tens. I can't think of nines. Right. Eights seem easy to me, and I don't know why. Well, because it's it's easier to be like there's this there is a flaw to it, whereas the nine implies it's like, almost it's so perfect. close, but you just yeah. can't say it's a 10 sure that's fair yeah yeah that's why I like so it, with my kind of cop-out answer of burnout paradigm master it's like i just need this one mechanic and it's not even like yeah. it would like change things dramatically it would just make things streamlined a little better oh silverman says because then it would be a four out of five in your mind and yeah, yeah. that makes sense that's why eight would be easier then yep i have that's two right. make I, I out of I've... nine out of ten because there was something missing from that for me, and I can't put my finger on what it was. I've always felt the five-point scale was better than, like, a ten-point scale. I agree. I or, like it more. Or even some that go into decimals and you have a hundred-point scale, because I just don't think you need more than five. It's just not... I think. I think five points conveys pretty much what you need to say yep. at least for me personally i'm totally with you i agree problem is that doesn't cleanly transfer to like aggregate systems very well because then you have yeah. big swings yep and that's why that system's usually more used yep right but then when like there's when sites are using a hundred point scale it's like what is the who cares like it, 100, this is 80 hundred's kind of overkill unless it's like an average kind of thing but yeah yeah. Yeah, like you're get you're you're getting so granular that it's like, is this actually conveying any additional information? Like an like eighty three versus an eighty four. I can't think of anyone I've talked to who's like, yeah, I'd rate this like a seventy four out of a hundred. Right. Exactly. Right, but I mean, there's plenty mm -hmm. that do like seven point seven out of ten, which is a you know seventy seven. It was the same thing. Yeah. 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 Most people I know would do like a seven point five. At least then it's like a twenty point scale basically at that point. But if you do half steps, yeah, 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 twenty is probably the highest I would go. Where I'm just like, yeah, you don't need to go any higher than that. 
you're getting you're getting too granular at that point. Final Fantasy VII remake was a nine out of ten because I was going to say Final Fantasy VII was a nine out of ten. So I was just like, (laughs) oh, the original for me was a ten out of (laughs) ten. So yeah, but uh, man, I kind of hate talking about Seven Remake because it's like Seven Remake Part One, literally. And I yeah, it's hard to yeah talk about because. That game is all in the slums, and the slums suck in both of those games. <laughs> and they're supposed to, but you spend so much time there. Uh, the Phantom Aegis writes, uh, You'll have a new pet who won't hurt you. Any existing pets you have, or your family. The catch is, you have to choose between having a pet python or pet tarantula. Both will have the la- same lifespan of 10 years. Which of the two biggest irrational fear species would you have as your pet? First off, I do not think it is irrational to find either of those right. the worst. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why they're like common fears. It's instinctual. Yeah. Um, this is hard Snake. because for me, it's Python, but I have cats and I think the Python would kill the cats before the tarantula well, would it, ever hurt them. It, in this hypothetical, it's not going to harm the pets, it says. Oh, okay. Python. 100 percent yeah python easily yeah i would i would definitely rather hang out with a python than a tarantula fuck tarantulas Pythons the are downside sweet. to the python is it would take up so much more space yes that's true they're awesome though but i i love but snakes. i still think i don't love snakes i don't want okay. a python but okay. i would but i would still if i had to look at a picture of a snake <laughs> or a tarantula i would rather look at a picture of a snake it's it's weird because tarantulas don't scare me so much until they walk. It's the movement of a spider that I hate. Yeah. Like, if it's yeah. on me, it's fine. Like I don't care. It's when they start moving their legs, like then I'm like, okay, that's just gross. I hate that shit. I don't like spiders. I don't want a giant spider that's so big it's hairy. Like <laughs> fuck that. Sure. Man, pythons are sick. The only reason why I wouldn't like, ever get one is I'm afraid it would kill my cats and that would like ruin me. So I couldn't do that. Yeah. I've gone to zoos where they're like, hey, we'll put a big snake on your neck and take your photo. And I've done that. Yeah. If you put a tarantula on my shoulder, I would flip out. I would not let okay. that happen. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Lineback writes, what game, series or standalone, would you not want to have a sequel? This again was pulled from the Discord because I saw them discussing it. Ghost Trick, I think that's a great answer. Okay, okay. Ghost Trick doesn't need a Ghost Trick does not need a sequel, correct? Yeah. You not want to have a sequel. And then here, here's here's one I'll give a twist to you while you're thinking about it. Yeah. Because because again, people were discussing in the Discord. What if Ghost Trick did get a sequel, but it was more anthology based? So there's no returning characters, and it's just the same. I mean, world. that's fine. Yeah. If I had to get a sequel, I guess that's what I would pick. But I'm still just really happy that there is not a Ghost Trick sequel. If you say the word sequel to me, I assume the characters are involved again. So yeah, if it's right. like, even though obviously you can have a sequel and have new roster, but yeah, I in my mind it imprints like returning characters. Man, I I don't know. I feel like when I like a thing, I want more of it. So I always want a sequel <laughs> for something. That I like. Yeah, I guess. I'm, I'm kind of with you where it's like I don't have the issue of like a bad sequel did not does not ruin the first game for me or, or movie like I that, that one is still by itself. Yeah, but there is part of me and I guess I'm, I'm thinking Ghost Trick that has like a special place in my heart. That if there was more of it that was subpar, it is now made when I now think about that property, mm. I will remember there is a subpar part to it, whereas right now I can think of Ghost Trick and be like. It's this shining light <laughs> like it is it is not damaged. It was it is nostalgic to me. No one came and screwed it up for like even for example, it's getting the like the remaster that comes out in like two months or whatever it is. Yeah, if that remaster runs really poorly and it gets a bunch of like negative press. I'm going to just think about that. Like that's just going to be like, oh, remember when it, 
ever, more people got to play it and that kind of sucked and now a bunch of people say bad things about ghost trick yeah i mean i i kind of get that like i don't have that personal thing but i get it for sure yeah you don't want it like tarnished in any yeah. way yeah yeah oh great one in the chat journey don't make anything else journey absolutely uh no i would definitely play a journey sequel uh, I don't need one. Really? I guess <laughs> it's not that I, yeah, I would. It's not like I don't necessarily want one, but if they released it, it wouldn't like break my heart or anything. Like I wouldn't care really. Also, Great B Man writes, uh, would you want a sequel to a bad game? Yes, because they might be able to fix it and save it. When I think of what I do want sequels for, but I don't, I think about the world and did they answer enough questions for me? Did they leave sure. enough mystery for me? So I, you know, I think of like Limbo or Inside. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to know what was going on in the Inside plant to make the thing at the end. I don't need to know that because the mystery was fun. Like, I'm good. Thank you for doing this three hour thing. I'm good. I don't need more. Sure. I'm like literally looking at my game wall, trying to think of a game that I wouldn't, that I wouldn't want a sequel for. But everything I think of already has a sequel. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of for you, John, though, because you you kind of play a lot more like gameplay over story. Yeah. Games. So a sequel is just kind of like. And there's more levels now. It's well, a sequel where, is usually yeah. the evolution I, of the gameplay. Yeah. Right? In, in my mind, I'm like, well, I don't know if I want Super Mario Odyssey to have a sequel. I'd rather just be a new Super Mario subtitled game. But then, like, that's kind of cheating in a way, because really, like, yeah. Galaxy Galaxy 2 are basically pre Odyssey games. Like, you can look at it that way. Yeah. They're just 3D Mario games. So, depends on how you want to bend the rule. But like storyline ones, I can't think of any series where I'm like, yeah, I'm good. They don't need any more on the story that didn't kind of get that. I guess Final Fantasy VI didn't get anything. I wish Trigger didn't get a sequel because Cross, while it's a fine game, <laughs> really shits on that story. Uh, I have an answer, yeah. actually. I think they would ruin a lot of what I really love about Shadow of the Colossus if they're just like, Colossus 2, even bigger or something. It's just like, Jesus Christ, what are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah. It's like, and now you, now you get to play as the monster and you can, like, take them well, on one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> so, like, it's the way the first one ends, right? Where you're just like, there's actually no way you can do a sequel that makes sense with these characters in this world that doesn't fucking ruin everything about this game. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. This is an that's interesting another, question. Another good one. That's I like this one. one for sure. What's that company working on right now? Aren't they uh, done? They haven't done anything since I thought they got shut down after Last Guardian. Yeah, that Were was they the shut last down? one. I think. Oh, okay. I think. I that's don't know. That's a bummer. Um, I'm looking. Hang on. Team Ico, right? Yeah. Uh, Japan Studio, I believe, is the actual. Overwatch 3. Hell yeah. <laughs> this time, the watch is over. <laughs> Yeah, Japan Studio is the studio that did all those Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, and Last Guardian, and and they are they got shut down. Oh, that's a bummer because they make those are just like some like noteworthy games. They are. Yeah, yeah. Team Eco developed Eco and Shadow of the Colossus. They were disbanded following lead game designer uh, Fumito Ueda leaving the company and establishing Gen Design. Uh, well, let me see what Gen Design. What's, what's up Gen to? Design? Gen Design, the article, if you click it, literally just goes to Fumito Ueda's, like, wiki page. Okay, I guess they have not done much yet. Okay. Yeah. In 2021, the new game was teased in one of Gen Design's New Year's postcards, which features screenshots from Ueda's three previous games and an unidentified screenshot of a person under a mechanical structure, which is thought to be from the new game. So there is a new game okay. in the works. Yeah, in September 2018, he revealed that the studio was prototyping stage of uh, designing a new game supported with the funding from the investment fund uh, Kowloon Knights. In tw March 2020, oh. Epic Games announced that they would be fully funding development of it with two companies splitting profits in half. So there's something in the works and a couple companies are involved. But it is right. not Sony exclusive anymore. 
Right. I remember the Kowloon Knights thing, actually, now that you bring that up. Okay. All right. Uh, Waste of Resources says, a man approaches you with an offer. He'll give you $100 for each game console you own that you're willing to change the faceplate or exterior design to include a picture of one of your fellow TDP co-hosts' face on it. How much money is this stranger giving you? So is it, okay, so is it like a small, (laughs) is it a small picture in like the corner of the faceplate? Or is it literally like the person's face stretched out onto the entire thing? Listen, if you're giving me a hundred dollars, I'll put whatever picture you want on these consoles. I don't give a <laughs> f. How long do we have to stay on here? Are we assuming it's permanent because of just how it goes? I will do. It I forever. assume so. <laughs> you can take it. You can you can take it off, but then you have to give back a hundred dollars. I don't think I'm doing it, honestly. You don't even have like extra ones that you're like these ones are I, in a box. Okay, you're- I can have extra ones. I like, just throw in a box. Sure, if we're if we're doing that, I thought we were had to pick like ones that we have hooked up. If we're just doing like shit we got in a box, sure. You, you, I got a bunch. However many think. consoles I have times 100, you can have them Every all. Every one of them? I, all of them? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> for, for permanent, I don't think I'd do it for 100. <laughs> oh, so you know for what? The Switch, this would be like the back of your Switch. Yeah, that, so that like... one I don't think I would do because, you know, <laughs> if you carried around, that's, that's probably no good. No. I probably still would put like Sean's face on I, my switch because it's funny. <laughs> I don't want to like turn around here in my office and just see like 30 <clears throat> pictures like Sean's face staring at me. Right. I like Sean, but like that would freak time. me the fuck out daily. Yeah, no, that's true. I don't look at my what console, would, so this is easy money for me. What would be worse, John, if it was all the same expression or if it was different <laughs> like poses? It's all the same expression except for one. Oh, like, no. Them. Yeah. <laughs> Like, and then wait, my mind, why, that why makes your, your mind start playing sad? tricks on it, and then it's just like, oh no, the sad face is somewhere else. Oh god, I'm going insane. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and, and somehow it's ch- it changes. Yeah, like, every month or so. It's yeah. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, take them all. Uh, give me a hundred. I, I don't think I would do it. I don't because like even if it, if I had like I probably have like ten I could do. It's like I don't need like a thousand dollars. I'm good. I don't like that seems so cheap for basically forcing something on it permanently. But like, here's the thing, like I've got a bunch here that I see daily, so like I wouldn't want those done, but I've got a bunch over there that are hooked up, but they're in like a lockup. I don't see them unless I'm like changing the game. Right. right so yeah. those might be fine because I just don't yeah. see them on the regular. There is something kind of sweet because, you know, you two are significantly older than me. And when you pass Thanks. away, and I'm an old man going through my console, significantly I'll get to see your faces again. Oh, so only like six years younger than me. Significantly older. Oh my god. Astroman writes: uh, Imagine you have been signed up to a fantasy football, what you guys call soccer tournament, and you have the ability to line up seven non-overpowered video game NPCs from whatever series you want. They don't have to be human necessarily. What's your lineup and how confident are you in winning considering the rest of the teams are formed in similar conditions to yours? All right. I'll get Pele from uh, any soccer game, first of all, yeah. on there. You're just going to pick 11, 11 soccer, soccer players. players? Yeah, Ronaldo. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Claptrap is my goalie but, because nobody's going to want like, to kick past him they're all going to want to hit him with the ball <laughs> they say npcs so that means they can't be playable claptrap is a playable class in one of them i think the pre-sequel you can play as claptrap. yeah the pre-sequel yeah shit and it has the npcs that has to be npcs so you can't pick the soccer players because you play as them what's the name of the dragon from skyrim parthenax or something he could be something i guess <laughs> Wouldn't that be overpowered because it's that the size of a giant dragon? Yeah, I guess yeah. so. Be unfair. All right, one of the idiots from High on Life, I guess, like an alien. But... <laughs> <laughs> they're all kind of shitty, but they're like big and weird, so that might be fun for one. So just like one of the guns, <laughs> get some, get some comedy in there. Not I'm Justin sure. Roiland. <laughs> yeah, not um... Justin Roiland. <laughs> Yeah, like the guy that what makes you purchase like the alien cum. Yeah, exactly. 
Would, would like 11 Pokemon, would that be like, is that overpowered? I, I was thinking like, a, could I put a Snorlax in goal or something? Mm. Or like, yeah, like a muck. You technically play as them because you, I guess you yeah. kind of give them commands. You're technically not playing as commands. them. Well, there are, there are like the Pokemon. What are those like dungeon crawl games? Cause you do play as oh, like the mystery, mystery dungeon. dungeon. Games. Yeah. Mystery yeah. dungeon. So some of them you can play as. I'm sure there's some Pokemon that you can't control. In some way, it just wasn't included. Sure, yeah, yeah. I don't know NPCs. I probably some kind of robots probably good to go. I can't think yeah. of a specific robot right now. <clears throat> yeah. My problem is my main my mind's filling up things like oh give me a mech from like Armored Core or Gundam like no those are all still overpowered. overpowered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hmm. Some rando from like GTA or something. Give me eleven a shopkeepers guy. that are great at running <laughs> and down and chasing you down. Yeah, I'm just a guy. give me, give me the postman from Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and all. And, and oh, Majora's Mask. that's pretty oh, good. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's running everywhere. Give me the happy mask salesman, so he also just kind of like freaks people out on the field. What if you give get um, some like track and field star from one of the Olympics games? What if you get that one overpowered Albed from Blitzball in Final Fantasy X with all his stats, like, high? I don't remember okay. what he even plays. Is he a goalie? I think he's a goalie. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, do you think the water soccer translates to land soccer? Surely or not. Just useless? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what an odd question. It's a weird one, yeah. VGC Kenny writes, I firmly believe Cuphead doesn't value your time as a player because it kicks you back to the start every time. I argue it feels like starting an entire dungeon over after dying in an RPG. I've been told that it's unreasonable comparison. A fight in Cuphead is like two to three minutes, and while that's true, I see it as a ratio rather than time just alone. Two minutes in an RPG is nothing, but two minutes in Cuphead is everything. Personally, I'd weigh the two everythings against you. I'd rather weigh the two everythings against each other. So constantly replaying like an hour's worth of dungeon and an RPG carries the same weight as constantly getting set back to the beginning of a cuphead fight. But what do you think? Do you see how games treat your time as a ratio depending on the game or just a solid time? Uh, I mean, so I'd argue cuphead doesn't value you as a player. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Cause you're a baby gamer. Eat shit, <laughs> baby gamer. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't think I do it as the ratio like they're neither. doing it. Yeah, I don't either. Mainly I because if, mm -hmm. if I on. die like eight times in Cuphead and fifteen minutes have gone by, that's just fifteen minutes I've I've lost. Yeah, I just consider it like that's fifteen minutes I played Cuphead because I don't it, care how long it takes to beat something necessarily if I'm playing games. I I would get the ratio if you were using like levels of patience instead of like physical time like physical time is physical right. time you can't really compare the two but like right this two or three minute fight having to redo it over and over is comparable to me getting lost in an hour-long dungeon that i can see yeah well, like the minute to minute like stress of cuphead is is so much more condensed than than the dungeon without a save point yeah uh, also for me it's if i get f like screwed over in something like, if I play, like, three hours of a game and then my save file corrupts or something, then I feel like I got screwed or something. But, like, if I'm just playing a game, an hour in a dungeon because I can't get through it faster, that's just, I mean, it is what it is, man. It's fine. <laughs> that's how long it took me. Well, they're also kind of just asking, like, if, so if you do an hour dungeon and you die, so you have to start at the beginning again, you do two minutes of Cuphead, die, start at the beginning again, has both players gone through the same amount of stress? That's completely dependent on you. Yeah, I, that is a per-person thing that literally cannot be compared. I've, uh, I right, mean, I've cool. said it multiple times, but when I first started playing a PlayStation, I didn't know you needed a memory card, so every game was a roguelite to me. <laughs> like, I had to play through it in one sitting. So, like, that, it is what it is. I think what also throws a wrinkle in here is because of because of like my expectation going into a level of Cuphead is it's like I'm not going to finish this in one go versus the RPG. There's a good chance I could finish a dungeon in one go. 
But so I'm I'm going in with the expectation, oh, I'm going to die 20 times. And this is going to count as my like as part of it. If I don't die 20 times, something really weird happened and I'm clearly a god. But no. Right. So each time I die, it's like I'm not as concerned because it's like this is part of the learning process. I need right. to e like keep punching me. I'll only come back stronger, Cuphead. Right. I mean, I agree. Actually, you bring up a good point, and I realize my patience threshold is more if I'm playing something and there's just no way I could have read what was coming and it one shots me, that pisses me off. Like, I don't and mind. That is kind of Cuphead, actually. It is. Cuphead has a lot of that. It is, but like the two minutes, like, I can get through it. it there, I mean, we're going to talk about it later tonight. But fucking Pizza Tower, some of those boss fights are entirely too long, and it's oh infuriating. My God. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, in that case, it's more the, I feel like if the game is screwing me at the end of a long session, that sucks more than just, like, me beating my head against something until I get it. And then, John, you with the last one. Yep. Sorry, I was reading the message in chat there. Someone wrote in, uh, Physicist Chris says, I played the entire Final Fantasy VII on PS1 without a card, hoping it didn't have one of those PS1s with the overheat shutoff issue. Oh, God. Did you just, like, pause it and, like, leave it on overnight? Yeah, that hope. had to be what they've done. I mean, that's how I played SNES games, so I thought that's how games were played. You just left it yeah. on. Lineback writes in and says, So I was talking with friends recently about how Yoko Taro confirmed that the Nier raids in Final Fantasy XIV are canon to the Dragon Guard and Nier series. Can't go into details though because of spoilers. Yeah. And how a lot of Dragon Guard and Nier fans played through XIV because they wanted to experience them despite access to them being locked behind beating the main story of Shadowbringers, the current second to last expansion. That got me wondering how much are you willing to do to experience the full story of a series that you love? YouTube exists and I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Because you know what else Yoko Taro wants you to do to experience that full series? He wants you to Play listen to an album. He wants you to see a stage play in Japanese. Like, d fuck that dude. He says everything is canon. So, like, yeah. I think he's just saying that to fuck with people. Because totally. I think that's hilarious. Totally. Low-key, that's hilarious. Yeah, for sure. He just, he just sits there in his thing. It's like, what can I make these dumb saps do next? <laughs> what can I? I think what he actually thinks is like, what can I get away with? And my fans will still be OK with it. It's a lot. <laughs> it's well, I'm so sure much. there's some of them that like like thrive off of that. They're like, oh, man, I have to eat 900 pieces of bubble gum now to get the answer. <laughs> Love this guy. Quickly got to go to Reddit. To be fair, I am that way with certain things as well. I get it. <laughs> but yeah, maybe not that far but i i'll go pretty i'll i'll get on a vpn and order some a double down from kfc so i can play a game early i'm not above it examples because that's what the, the question is yeah um i'm trying to think if there's anything where i've gone to do that and i don't think i have an example where i like really had to do something out there to like continue the story experience the full story i've read the mass effect books because they have more I read those uh, yeah right and the comics yeah, i just like the universe yeah yeah i wouldn't say that's something far out though because like that's just like yeah. a supplemental thing it's right like saying like the halo you read the halo books like those are well regarded from what i remember right but like I don't know if it feels damning that I don't have any series that I would go to that lengths for or maybe relieving that I don't have something I would go to that lengths for. Yeah, just like a normal person. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm also having a hard time just thinking of a, an example that's anywhere on the scale of like this where it's like you need oh. to play a whole other game for this two minute chunk. Oh, I've definitely even, like, probably done that. Even like near like I didn't go and play what was like the remaster I like came out reincarnation. Recently. Yeah, I didn't play that one. Even though I really enjoyed Automata. <sighs> Wait, Reincarnation's the mobile gotcha game. The other Oh, one. sorry, uh Replicant. What was it? Replicant, yes. Yeah, with all the with all the numbers. Yeah. I have played the gotcha game and continue to. So I'm somewhat okay. there. <laughs> 
Isn't that is that the one that has like you get to a certain story beat and then like it deletes your save or you can't access past content anymore? Or was that a different one that he did? I know it was something Yoko Taro related. That's, that's Automata. A, that's a yo I mean, that's a Yoko Taro thing in most stuff he does. <laughs> so oh, okay. yeah. But it is a mobile game specifically, I know that they're talking about. Oh, it's, talking about is it the other one he did? Al Sin of Alice it's or Sin something? Alice? Sin, I think it might yeah. be Sin of Alice. Something like that. All right, that's going to do it for questions. Thank you. If you want to send in questions for next week, top down perspective at gmail.com, at TDP podcast on Twitter or the Discord channel or John's PO Box. Uh, what is your game of the week? Demonologist. Advanced Wars. Coffee Talk 2. Ooh. Cool. Ooh. If you're a patron, hang out because we're going to talk about Pizza Tower. Otherwise, I will see you guys in a couple weeks. Bye. Bye, everybody.